On the next Canine Corner, we'll join a therapy dog group on a visit to a local hospital. Plus, ever wondered how to strengthen the bond between you and your dog? We have some ideas that can help, and we'll tell you how you can give this adorable girl a forever home. All this coming up on the next Canine Corner. Hi there, I'm Rhiannon Drutanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. We have a Bow Wow-rific show for you today. See what I did there? This show will make you feel all warm and fuzzy because it's about giving back and bonding with your dog. Love on Four Paws will be here to talk to us about their organization. Plus, my co-host Popeye Drutanich will be here to help me go over some ways to bond with your dog. But first, Kenmar Rescue is here, and you know what that means. Adorable rescue dogs, of course. Hello, my name is Ken Guild, and I'm the co-founder of Kenmar Rescue along with Marty Petri. We're a Los Angeles-based rescue, and we're foster-based. We feel that having the dogs in a foster home will let us be able to tell the personality of the dog, so we've done very well. We've saved over 700 dogs in the last seven years. Hi, Rhiannon. Thanks for having us on your show today, and we just want to talk about meeting our more foster parents. We're a foster-based rescue, and for every foster family that we have, we get to save a life. And it's very important for people to know that we provide everything from the food, the medical, all the supplies. In turn, they provide the shelter and the love. Our adoption events are once a month, the second Saturday of every month, and they're from 11 to 3 at the Gelson's in La Cunada. So we welcome all the viewers to come out and meet new friends. Today, we have Georgie. He's the owner surrender. The people that owned him found out that they couldn't have dogs, so we took him in. He's a year and four months. He's a multi-pool, 12, 12 pounds, and he knows how to say sit. He knows how to sit when you say sit, and he's very sweet, and he is very smart, and he knows how to be very affectionate, and he likes to walk on a leash. Today we have little Marley. She weighs a whopping four pounds. She's a portable pet. She's up to date with all of her shots. She is also crate trained and she loves to just sniff around and be a companion. She is a little Pomeranian blend um, and she is microchipped and spayed. And as always, we always do home checks on all of our adoptions. We bring them to you. And all you have to do is apply online. So if you're interested in giving a forever home to little Marley, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. If you'd like to foster for Kenmar Rescue, just visit our website at K-E-N-M-A-R-R-E-S-C-U-E, KenmarRescue.org, and fill out an online foster parent application, and we will give you a call. Now we have a very special treat. We had an amazing opportunity to tag along on a therapy dog visit with Love on Four Paws at Providence Little Company of Mary Hospital in Torrance. Take a look. If you saw him walking down the hallway of the hospital, you might do a double take, but Ace and Aya is a therapy dog. A few years ago, um, I wasn't feeling well and Ace just was in tune with me. He knew when I wanted him to stay away, he'd stay away and just lay on the floor and just look at me. Or he knew when I was halfway ready, he'd come and with his nose, he'd hit me on my leg. Or then he knew when I was ready for a hug, so he'd come here give me a hug. So I thought, I need to share him. Fast forward two years and many hospital visits later, Ace is a therapy dog who can make just about anyone he meets smile. Well, Love and Four Paws is a nonprofit organization that focuses on providing pet therapy. And there's, oh gosh, we visit facilities throughout LA County um, and we use our own personal pets. I was able to tag along with Victoria and Ace and see this therapy dog work his magic at Providence Little Company of Mary Hospital in Torrance. So during the normal visit, the first thing we do is we knock and we ask if they'd like a visit from the therapy dog. Um, if they say yes, we'll go in. If they want him on the bed, we put a clean sheet on the bed or over them and we put the dog on the bed and they could pet him, they could hug him, they could talk to him, whatever it is they want to do with the pet. Love on Four Paws also gives patients a memento to remember their visit with the therapy dog. 
and so we'll visit for a while and then we'll take a picture a polaroid picture if we ask if they'd like a picture if they say yes we'll take a polaroid picture of the patient with the, the therapy dog many of the patients they visit are missing their own dogs and pets so meeting a therapy dog provides them with a little comfort when they are away from home they just want to hug an animal to hug a dog and see into their eyes and the dogs talk with their eyes Hospital staff and visitors also stop to play and cuddle with Ace. It's easy to see how a therapy dog brings joy to a place not always known for that. Well, it helps them for one smile. When you're in a hospital, the last thing you wanna do is smile. You're just thinking about what's wrong. And when we bring a pet in, it takes them out of that. Even if it's for a few minutes, they forget why they're there. They forget what's going on you know, with their body, and they're just happy. A therapy dog visit provides a patient with comfort that sometimes only an animal can provide. And even though all of the visits bring joy, Victoria says there is one that stands out in her mind. It was a, a young boy, about 16 years old, as soon as he saw Ace, he had the biggest smile on his face. I was talking to his mom, and his mom told me that that was the first time he had smiled in over six months. And that just gave me the chills, and that is the reason why I do it, for those special visits. And the benefits of a therapy dog visit last after the dog has left the room. They could smile just for 10 minutes, and talk about their experience for an hour after that, like that is really special. If you are interested in contacting Love on Four Paws, please visit loveonfourpaws.org. Love on Four Paws does amazing work and they'll be back later in the show. We're gonna take a short break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more doggone fun when we come back. Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Rhiannon Trutanich. My co-host, Popeye Trutanich, is here with me now to go over some ways you can strengthen the bond with your dog. The best way to achieve that is to stay connected and engaged with your dog at all times. But we'll get to that later. First, we're going to talk about the benefits of dog bonding. When you and your dog have a strong bond, it makes everything you do so much better. Going for a ride or taking a walk is even more fun when you and your dog are close. Secondly, training your dog becomes a breeze when you guys have a strong bond. They listen to you better and they follow direction even more. We all want to have a strong bond with our dog, but for whatever reason, sometimes we don't. Maybe you've adopted a new rescue dog or maybe you travel a lot and are out of town for work. Whatever the reason, we're going to give you a few ways to strengthen that bond between you and your dog. So now, here's the fun part. Let's talk about some ways to strengthen the bond between you and your dog. One of the easiest ways to be in tune with your dog and to get to know their likes and dislikes is to spend time with them. If you're at home, sit on the couch and watch a movie, preferably a dog-themed one, right Popeye? Or just go outside and go in the backyard, bring your cup of coffee or tea and just sit and be with your dog. They'll love it. Now if you're feeling ambitious, like Popeye and I were today, you can pack a picnic and head to your local park. Bring sandwiches for you and chips, or chips for your dog too, if they're anything like Popeye. Also bring your dog's food, water, and treats. If you go to a local dog park, you can even take your dog off leash, so bring their favorite tennis ball or toy and just have fun and enjoy the afternoon. And if you're like Popeye and I, you might want to dress alike, like we did today. It'll help, I promise. So another great way to strengthen that bond with your dog is to pet with purpose. Here on Canine Corner, we've talked about massaging your dog before, and that's a great way to get in tune with your dog. Just giving him a light massage, you know, maybe in the morning or at night for five or ten minutes. Nothing too much, but just spending that time with them, and trust me, they will love it. Another great way is to brush your dog. I have a brush here for Popeye, a soft bristle one since he has shorter hair, but if your dog has longer hair, use the longer bristles and just give them, you know, a little bit of a brushing, maybe at nighttime before they go to sleep. Really, they'll enjoy it and you'll enjoy that time that you get to spend with them. So if you wanna use walking as a way to enhance the bond between you and your dog, there's a few different things you can do. First of all, try not to wear headphones when you walk with your dog. That way your dog knows that you're connected to them and not focused on whatever you're listening to. Another way is to talk to your dog throughout the walk. Even if you're just saying you're tired and you wanna go home, 
talk to them. It keeps you two interacting and it really helps. Point things out to them along the walking route as well. It makes everything more engaging and more enjoyable for you and your dog. So remember to love your dog, talk to your dog, and give some of these things a try to strengthen your bond with your dog. It looks like Popeye's about ready to get back to our picnic, so we'll see you later. Another great way to bond with your dog is to give back, donating blankets, unopened dog food, and dog toys to animal control, as well as your local shelter and rescue groups is a great way to help out. Love on Four Paws is back with us now to answer your questions about how you and your dog can get involved. Anyone could do it, um, as long as it depends on the dog's temperament. They do, you do need to know their basic commands, like sit, stay, come, leave it. Um, that's very important, because there could be pills on the floor in the hospital. Um, they need to be able to walk without tugging at your leash. And as a handler, we need to have control over the pet. And the pet, um, needs to be comfortable around strangers. They need to love people. That's very important. And they need to be able to stay calm when there's strange noises going around. There's a lot of different noises in hospitals and they need to be able to stay calm and stay focused. And that's what we, um, the organization looks for in dogs. We never did any formal training with Ace. Just as soon as we got him, we wanted to teach him the basic commands. And he just turned out to be a very mellow, loving dog. And when we went through the exam process, he passed the basic commands. He passed the scenario based where they make loud noises or they have um, a large amount of people coming, yelling, like they don't like dogs. And they give us opportunity to say or do what we do to keep them calm since we're trained, we're taking the exam with them together. And the last part of the exam was a separation exam where, where, for instance, I left the room and I left him with strangers and he had to be fine being with strangers alone without me. And they did good. So any dog, as long as they have a good temperament and they love people, they're not afraid of strangers, you know, can be a good, would be a good candidate for a therapy dog. As far as volunteering, no, uh, but it, it is a nonprofit organization, so any contributions would help. Uh, we do have volunteers, but there are volunteers that had been in the program with their dogs, and for whatever reason, their dog can no longer, you know, perform, whether it's age or illness. So they, they'll be able to still continue and volunteer and they help us get the sheets, carry our bags, take photos, but if we don't have a pet in the program, unfortunately, right now the, the organization, you know, is, does, isn't in need of volunteers, we could donate, definitely donate, which goes um, towards, you like the dog vest, you know, the handler's shirts, um, the exam process, all you know, different things, Polaroid cameras, the film for the cameras to give to the patients, things like that. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now if you missed the adoption segment at the beginning of our show or just want to see the adorable dogs again, here's your recap. Georgie is a multi poo. He's a year and four months old and weighs 12 pounds. He was surrendered by his owner. He's a very well mannered dog and knows how to sit. He also walks great on a leash. He's a very smart dog with a great personality. He's a very affectionate and sweet dog. Marley is a Pomeranian mix. She's two years old and weighs four pounds. She was also surrendered by her owner. She is crate trained. She's also spayed and microchipped. She's up to date on all her shots. She's a very curious dog. She has a great personality and she's a portable pet and would make a great companion. If you are interested in adopting either of these dogs or becoming a foster for Kenmar Rescue, please visit KenmarRescue.org. If you want even more Canine Corner, be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich and we'll see you next time.